My name is Amata and this Red Gaming Tech video we are here to discuss a couple of things and the first item on our itinerary is Intel Coffee Lake but it is the mobile variation as we have an interesting rumour regarding what they're going to be doing with notebooks as according to the industry sources of DigiTimes we're going to be seeing the 2-in-1 and ultra-thin notebooks models come out utilising Coffee Lake mobile CPUs in September from leading vendors such as Asus and Acer and all that jazz. Now, in the land of notebooks and ultra thins, we have actually seen a pretty stable shipment record, despite the fact that we saw a bit of a decline in that of notebook PCs and general desktops. So obviously, Intel are very keen to jump on this market, which is why we're seeing you know, big hitters like Dell and HP and Lenovo and so on, gearing up to present their new models in September, utilising Coffee Lake U, which of course is what the mobile variation of the 8th gen of processor uses. Now, what's interesting is that we also have a comment from Chris Walker, Vice President of Intel's Client Computing Group and also General Manager of Mobility Client Platform, and he basically said that the Coffee Lake Base U series which is the i7-8650U and 855 and 8250U are not only 40% higher than the previous generation in productivity, but also offer some neat features like 4K Ultra HD content and obviously just faster speeds with usability in general, response time, that sort of thing. There's one thing I'm sure you'll notice when borrowing that laptop that your friend has that's seemingly ancient from, you know, the prehistoric times. The most frustrating thing is not trying to game on it, because you wouldn't. It is actually how slow it is to respond to even the most basic commands. And obviously this is going to be the sort of forefront thing. Like when you test out a laptop or whatever at the store, oh, okay, yeah, this is, this is snippy. I'm not feeling any lag or whatever. Obviously they don't have everything ever installed on it, but it's still nice to know. So if you're perhaps on the market for a ultra thin or two in one notebook then perhaps just uh, hold your horses until at least September as we should be seeing if these sources are correct and of course this could be wrong. We should be seeing some new models being displayed using Coffee Lake U and of course we can expect benchmarks, performance, price, release date, that sort of thing. And really it is price versus performance that really matters when it comes to a laptop, especially if you're planning on using it for gaming. And of course a battery life as well, which again according to Chris Walker is going to be 10 hours, which isn't bad actually. Um, I doubt many people are going to be using their laptop for 10 hours straight without really plugging themselves back into a power source at some point. So, I said we had a couple of things to discuss. Well, our second item is actually from AMD. Now, this is actually regarding how they have designed the chips Threadripper and Epic. And they have shown the production costs for multi-chip design, which obviously is shorter to MCM. Now, if you look on the screen, you will see a rather nice diagram from AMD. So you might be wondering, well, okay, how is Threadripper and Epic designed in comparison to, say, you know, a previous chip? And you guys probably know this, but let's go for a bit of a TLDR, shall we, as you may or may not be aware. And it's always nice to keep us refreshed on hardware, but it's actually when we're talking about, hey, this is how much it costs, how it minimizes cost, and... This does kind of lead into why AMD can actually cut prices on Epic and Threadripper. Now, basically, you've got eight processors on Threadripper and Epic, and there are two sets of CCX, each with four processors, which make up a die. So basically, you have each cluster with eight processors because each has two CCXs, and each CCX has four CPUs. Now, Threadripper and Epic use something called Infinity Fabric, so these dies can actually speak to each other. And basically, by doing this sort of Lego arrangement with the chip dies, production cost is shrunk pretty dramatically because you can have eight smaller chip dies and put them together using Infinity Fabric rather than creating a huge chip like we see in Threadripper and Epic. Like to create those chips, they would have, you know, had to raise the cost significantly. So you can kind of see. Now, Paul has done a video on this topic before, on Infinity Fabric and that sort of jazz. And there will be a link either in the description or as a card on the screen. YouTube cards have been kind of playing up with me lately, so whether or not it decides to work is whether or not there will be an item on the screen. So, 
basically what we can learn from this and obviously this image that AMD shared is that it's 41% cheaper for AMD to do this than it would be to produce a huge processor die containing all 32 cores and again this is why they can cut costs. Now obviously you might be wondering okay so are Intel not doing this then? And the answer is they have done it with their own technology in Skydeck X and Xeon but we are not really clear on why the price is what it is, but one of the more simpler answers is probably because their yields aren't as good and it might be more difficult to produce. But again, that is a pure guesstimate on my part. Please don't take that as gospel. It is just a logical guesstimate on what might be happening over at Camp Intel. We don't actually know, but that seems a logical explanation as AMD and Intel are kind of using a similar strategy. Obviously, the technology isn't exactly the same, but... A similar principle is at hand. So not only are these chips cheaper produced from AMD because of Infinity Fabric and reducing these smaller chips, it obviously increases yields. Now I just said that yields might be the reason that Intel are having to increase the cost. Obviously, if you are getting better yields and obviously each chip is cheaper to produce, you can kind of see the cost is not going to be quite so astronomical for AMD and obviously that means that at the point of sale, it's also going to be less expensive for the user. So all of that comes to, down to a very interesting peek under the hood as to how they can offer Threadripper and Epic to us at those prices, and it is pretty much a ton cheaper for them to do it this way. Our final item on our itinerary is actually a bit of clarification. Now you might have seen the other day that Final Fantasy XV was confirmed for the PC and I'm pretty damn happy for this. They haven't given us a release date yet. Um, it is early 2018 is all we have but regardless I'm I'm happy. Tabata has been teasing us for ages going yeah 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 I want to do PC but you know console first. And I'm like you know fair enough Tabata but you know gaff like Um But there was some leaked or rather released should I say not leaked system requirements for the game and they were rather concerning primarily due to the 170 gigabytes needed to install the game and obviously you're going what what 170 gigabytes for a game are you insane that that makes like the 60 gigs required for some of these games look like absolute pittance but apparently according to Tabata when he clarified this situation to Kotaku it's a bit of a misunderstanding Apparently we won't actually need 170 gigabytes to install the game on PC. He basically said it was an error in the press release of Square Enix and also you might recall that for 4K it's listed a GTX 1080 Ti to run the game. Now he also said that isn't the case and he said quote that was a mistake actually that was a communications mistake something got put in a memo that really shouldn't have what is in the specifications that went out based on the uh, based on the specs we're running the demo on today. Again, the final specs for the release haven't been fixed yet. There's a very good chance they can change some put in there and it got reported as the recommended specs, but that's not the final fixed version. The fact that it became that number is a communication error. Now, they did explain further, sorry, to Bartra explain further, that the demo did run at 4K using a 1080 Ti, but these minimum specs will apparently be on the same level as the console version. And he said, quote, but we've not fixed the frame rate at 30 frames at all. It's just on the 1080 Ti. That's the maximum that one can do at 4K. So that's what it's doing at the moment. So basically, just wait. They're still optimizing. That's why it's coming out early 2018, because obviously they've got to not only do support for 4K and everything else, they're also doing mod support. Uh, hopefully that wasn't a miscommunication, because that would be epic. Um, and obviously just getting the game to run properly on a infinite amount of rigs or configur infinite configuration of rigs, should I say. So they've got a lot of work to do ahead of them. So I would not expect the minimum or recommended specs until at least like January because early 2018 could be, you know, February, March. You know, March would still clarify as early. It's only when you get into like late March, April that you start going into like, okay, we're going to the middle of the year now. Come on, guys. So basically, hopefully we won't need 170 gigabytes. Like if it's like 80 gigs, that's still a lot. But that's all reasonable considering it has to do with DLC and blah, 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 blah. So with any luck... It won't be that, because that's insane. <laughs> I will admit, when I saw that yesterday, I was just like, that can't be right. 
how can a game be 170 gigs? Like, <laughs> that's insane. Anyway, that's me done for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. And if you're at all interested, check us out on Patreon. And even if you don't donate, that's absolutely fine. As I said, like and subscribe. That helps us out as well. So, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.